carbs have a unique metabolic effect that makes us fat. At least, that's the idea sold by Mr. Gary Torbs, Dr. David Ludwig, and other low-carb enthusiasts. But it's time they admit that they're wrong. Torbs and co believe that carbohydrate drives obesity because it raises a hormone, insulin. Insulin is said to block the release of fat and also drive additional fat storage. This is known as the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis of obesity. But studies continually show that it's wrong. If raised insulin drives weight gain, then conversely, reduced insulin from cutting carbs should be therapeutic. In other words, we'd expect an extremely low carb diet to cause more fat loss than a typical Western diet. Torbs believes a metabolic advantage comes into play here. The latest trial to compare these two eating patterns was a tightly controlled metabolic ward study, which means no cheating on the diet. It was run by Dr. Kevin Hall and ironically funded by Torbs' own NUSI organization. For four consecutive weeks, 16 overweight or obese men were fed a standard American diet, quite high in carbs, uh, about 50% carbohydrate, 15% protein, and 35% fat. According to the sample menu published, it included loads of refined carbs, including lemonade, granola bars, pretzel sticks, and sandwich bread. Participants were then immediately switched to a very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet, which was 5% carbohydrate, 15% protein, and 80% fat for another four weeks. So both the high carb diet and the low carb ketogenic diet were equal in calories and protein, and subjects had no access to any outside foods for the entire eight week period. Okay, so what do you think happened? Well, after the first four weeks on the high carb diet, participants actually lost 1.1 pounds or half a kilo of body fat on average. Switching to the low carb ketogenic diet for the next four weeks led to a significant dip in insulin levels by almost half. However, once again, participants only lost another 1.1 pounds or half a kilo of body fat. So the high carb diet was just as effective for fat loss as the low carb diet, despite far higher insulin levels. This just adds to the mounting evidence disproving the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. To be fair, although there was no difference in fat loss, the low carb ketogenic diet did increase metabolic rate by about 40 calories on average by the end of the four weeks. Now this was actually the main aim of the study. However, that small metabolic advantage was rapidly decreasing with each passing day. In fact, other studies show that it all but disappears after several weeks. Even if that 40 calorie advantage remained for an entire year, which is equivalent to about 14,600 extra calories expended per year, it likely equals only four pounds or two kilos of weight loss after two to three years, if you don't cheat on your ketogenic diet. That may be statistically significant, but it's certainly not clinically significant. Many low carb enthusiasts will pick at the design of the study to challenge its validity, but this was not the first well-controlled clinical trial to show that carbs and insulin do not make you fat. In fact, it was shown over a decade ago in a six-week trial of 20 subjects. Participants were randomly assigned to follow either a ketogenic diet, 5% carbs, or a moderate carb diet, 40% carbs, and there was no difference in average weight loss or fat loss. And all food and beverages were provided to participants as well. You can see in the graphs that, if anything, strictly cutting carbs leads to less fat loss as time goes on. There has also been a smaller and slightly different version of the NUSI study that I talked about first, which was also run by Dr. Kevin Hall. His team found a reduced carb diet, which was 29% carbs, resulted in less fat loss than a reduced fat diet, which was 7.7% fat. At the time, their computer model even predicted the trend seen in that latest study. Now for that study, low carb enthusiasts were arguing that the reduced carb diet was not low carb enough but it still lowered insulin levels considerably. And despite this change, there was no fat loss advantage compared to the low fat diet. Now, just to clarify the message of this video, that's not to say carb laden junk foods and soft drinks are off the hook. They are undoubtedly the biggest contributors to excess calories and therefore one of the main drivers of obesity and related health problems. But it's because of junk food as a whole, the total calories plus refined ingredients, not just because of the carbs it contains. Remember that clinical trials where the diet is strictly controlled for is the gold standard of scientific evidence in this area. These deserve the most weight when we consider all the evidence, and they all show that carbs are not uniquely fattening, whether that's adding more carbs into the diet or cutting carbs for weight loss. 
There's loads of other studies I haven't even mentioned here too, including other trials, observational studies, and historical evidence, which together all disprove the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. I'll end it with this. If you enjoy a very low carb eating pattern and it's improved your health, then there's no reason to stop. It may even be superior to low fat for managing type two diabetes and other metabolic health conditions. Just know that cutting carbs is definitely not the only way to get healthy and lose weight. So stop telling people that it is. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and you can even leave a comment. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the Diet vs. Disease channel so you don't miss out on other videos like this one.